Okay, it's the end of the session. Uh, because it's COVID, I'm doing this outside. The dogs, two, a couple of dogs were in their kennels uh, for most of the session, and that's just, uh, we don't like dogs being in kennel for longer than four hours. So I was sent outside to do this so they can be uh, free. Now this is, we're primarily just worked with, uh, thank you, uh, with uh, Zeus. Uh, there's three dogs in the house. Uh, there's an Akita, and then we have a little dog, but they don't really have problems. Now for the Akita, a quick little note, you might want to look into getting Cosequin. Uh, Cosequin is a glucosamine supplement. It's like a vitamin. It's uh, really just like a vitamin, but it helps with the uh, putting the gel back in between bones. Sometimes uh, dogs with uh, injuries like what your dog had, uh, there becomes bone on bone contact and the glucosamine can help with that. Um, when you have older dogs, it really helps. All right, so we talked about, uh, we met uh, outside, and I would recommend that you do a similar sort of thing. So what I, I'll describe, what I did was, uh, before I got here, I put a treat trail on the ground, and then I was over there, I was outside, make sure that you have the person outside of your property. And so, because uh, your property can be territorial. And then basically what I would do is every once in a while, I would, uh, uh, maybe once a day, have a treat trail. And then so you leave the treat trail there, and you kind of move your, uh, park your car a little bit more on that side of the driveway, so you have a little bit of a channel, and then you walk down there, and then the person's on the other side. So when the dog comes out, we want to make sure the dog can't see the person in the door. So you might have your car a little bit further back in the driveway so it's blocking their vision. The dog gets a treat, 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 treat. About every three feet or so, there's a treat, there's a trail, and then on the other side of your mailbox is, is where the human would be. So the dog's going to approach the human from this angle. The human should not be trying to talk to the dog, definitely should not be looking at the dog or moving. Um, and you want to leave the dog up behind and it's getting all these trail of treats and we like to let the dog sniff the person's backside, make sure the dog does not lunge. And I'm going to talk about the warning signals here in a minute. Um, so you want to practice this uh, maybe uh, once a day for about two or three days. Then the fourth day or so, you actually have somebody there. So the dog's been warmed up. Now I like this activity. I go outside and you might even call it like greeting or hospitality. Remember use fun command words. So I come out here, hospitality, every time I look up the treat. So now I say hospitality, the dog's like, I'm about to go outside and get a whole bunch of treats. Then they get all the way over here, and then they meet the person. Uh, now, uh, one of the things I'd like the guardians to do, there's, there's a couple here, and so I'd like when one of the guardians to be walking with the dog and the other guardian to be staying about like 40 feet back, maybe even across the street, and just with a little notebook, and that person's job is just to look exclusively at the dog and observe the dog. And the person with the handler, the person with the dog, is gonna lead the dog up to people or whatever, you know, just be in your normal encounter. And then basically, you wanna notice, and you also might film it. That allows you to look at it afterwards. Um, because dog uh, communications are very quick sometimes. So if you see the dog freeze, seem to be one of his signals. Uh, he also does not like eye contact, so make sure you tell strangers to avoid giving them eye contact. But he was coming up, he was sniffing, and dogs are normally lit, what I call wiggly and jiggly. They're kind of, their body's relaxed, their head's moving around, their mouth is typically open, uh, and it, we, we interpret it as a smile. And then right before I'm, I'm uncomfortable, I'm going to go like this. That's a big warning. So the dog sit, gets sudden, closes his mouth, still, and stares. Sometimes the ears will go, but it's harder to see in a bit same Bernard, but the ears sometimes will move in one direction or the other. The tail sometimes comes straight up or starts quivering really fast. Um, the breathing might accelerate or hold its breath. Sometimes the pupils will dilate, or the pupils will usually dilate, it's hard to see. Um, so if you start recognizing these signs, licking the lips, intentionally not looking at the thing, that's called avoidance. So the idea is you want to kind of have somebody following the handler, either filming the dog or observing the dog very carefully, then every time it reacts, we don't want to react. But if the first couple times you do this, it's okay. So you kind of you, what you're doing is looking for the warning signals. Now the dog might like go from an open mouth to a closed mouth stare. The ears shift forward. The tail comes up. The hackles come forward. Then it lunges, and that might happen in about one and a half seconds. So you have to be very quick to respond with those things. So as soon as you see the dog's kind of like loosey goosey, and then focus. So that's the idea or the focus exercise that I talked that I showed you guys. So you want to catch him as soon as you get that first signal. You want to redirect him. Now, anytime your dog's reactive, the very best thing you do is increase distance. Once he's reactive, he's hysterical. He's not going to hear you. He's not going to learn anything. He's not going to listen to anything. So you want, that's one time I might physically have to forcefully take the dog away. Do, don't do it in an abusive way. But um, for protection purposes, we might do that. But the, really, the idea is we want to be proactive. We want to know what to look for. We want to set the dog up for success, which we talked about exercise. So exercise the dog first. Once you've done this, you know the warning signals. Then you take him around. And maybe he doesn't like people walking by the other, uh, walking outside. So we find a distance where he'd be far enough away where can he sit and take a treat. If you won't, can't sit or take a treat, you're too close. It's too intense. So let's say I can sit here while people are walking across the street. And we do the click for looks thing that we did. So I'm just kind of sitting here. Click. Friendly. And then I look again. Click. 
friendly. So we're helping him engage, disengage, and be rewarded, and we're assigning a marker of friendly. Now, if it's a person that you know, I would say the person's name when you get the treat. Um, that click for looks, I have videos for that on my website, but it works really, really well because it's the easiest way for the dog to interact with the person. The second stage I would do when the people come inside, again, I would try to find in your new place uh, overseas or here if you can, uh, and you can do it here. That post looks pretty, uh, pretty durable. So you take a leash, run around the post, and run it through the handle, and then have the person sitting just outside the dog's reach. Well, however far enough away you need to be so the dog's not reactive. And so the first one, we might have the guests come over, they meet by doing the trail of treats, and then after we get the treats, uh, and don't push too long, because it seemed like we did good for about a minute and a half, and then the lunch came. So maybe keep it like a minute, then call them away, and then you do a little bit of the focus exercise while your friend gets up. Then you walk, maybe four houses up the street, and your friend is in the street, and you're here, so we're kind of walking, so there's uh, the, dog, the human dog, and then the guest is over there. And so we're all in a line. Nobody's in front, nobody's behind. And we walk maybe five or six houses, we turn around and we come back, and then we go back in the house. Now again, we exercise the dog to set it up for success for this. So then maybe we let, let the dog go, dog go inside, and the dog gets to drink some water and the human, the guest stays outside for a minute. So the dog gets to drink some water and relax. The human kind of reloads, grabs a bunch of treats, and maybe does, does, finds another tether or uses the leash. And remember with the leash, we don't want to have tension on the leash unless we have to because the dog's reacting. We don't want to hold it with a tense leash because that can create a response. So basically the idea is we do the treat trail and then a little bit of a mini walk, but first the dog is exercised. Then we do the treat trail and mini walk. Then the dog gets to go inside, get some water, relax. Then we have the person come inside and then you could do the click for looks. And then maybe that person, maybe just do it right here for the door. Hopefully it's not gonna be a million degrees too long. And so the person opens the door, comes inside, the dog looks, click, get a treat, and the person steps back outside, closes the door. And then we do that. Now the door might be too difficult, so it might be coming around the corner. So you're in your living room, you have the person walk down the hallway and stay right outside the dog's view. So the, dog's, the wall's here, the human's here, and the dog's here, so the wall's blocking. And then basically you have your treat and your uh, your treats and a clicker in your hand. The person steps forward so the dog can see it. Dog looks, we click, the dog looks up. The person steps backwards when the dog looks away. We give the dog a treat and say the person's name. Then the dog looks back and the person's not there. They look back at you, well, what happened? And then the person comes and the dog sees it, click, I look away and I get Mary. Look, click, Mary. And after a while, and then Mary keeps on stepping, the person steps outside, outside the dog's reach. At first, what you don't wanna do for click for looks is as soon as I look, click. And then the click's gonna charge the dog to look away, then we give them a treat right away. After the dog's pretty much just staring at the person, then we go one, two seconds before we click, and then they look away. And we, can, and then we do it three seconds, four seconds. This is very slow progression. You wanna to get to the point where the dog can stare at somebody for about 10 seconds. Now, if you're on a walk about Longer than a three second stare of some of your dogs probably not gonna like is probably the least, the, the longest you wanna let it do that. Give it maybe two seconds and then ask it to come eyes or whatever it is. Um, so the dog is kind of used to looking away from you, uh, looking away from the object. Um, all right, so, um, and then the, the last stage about meeting a guest I would do. So the first stage is, again, we exercise the dog first, we did the treat trail, then the dog goes inside to relax, spend two or three minutes, then the person comes and we do the click for looks and then the person leaves. Now, if the dog is reactive to the person out there, then we might have to do that stage. The whole point of all these things are happening without the dog reacting, because we want to build one success on top of another success. Um, so, uh, so that maybe the first stage is just doing uh, the tree trail and then seeing the dog and then coming in and doing for some click for looks and then the guest leaves. Maybe the next time the guest comes, we do all the same things, but inside we do the uh, click for looks and then we sit down and then maybe the person pulls out treats and is tossing the treat to Zeus. Zeus can catch. This is a wonderful way for the dog to interact with the guest, for the guest to be far enough away to be safe and to feel comfortable, and for the humans to feel comfortable, and the dog have a positive association. And the person is able to tell the dog, sit. And when Zeus sits, they throw the treat. And if he catches it, you know, you say catch or whatever the word is if you need to. But the idea is now the dog, I met the person, we were outside, there were distractions, I was set up for success by exercising, I, I was in a really good mood because I had all these treats, then I met the, met the person, we went for a short walk, then I got to go outside and cool my jets, then the person came back in and every time I looked at him, I got a treat, then they left. Wow, that was a really good experience. And the next time I come over, we repeat the same thing and I feel more comfortable because I've already done that activity with them. And now this time they do the treat tossing. And then maybe the, maybe the next visit, if you feel comfortable, things are going well, then you do the focus exercise like I talked about in the video above. Then you have the guest right here next to you. So I do the focus exercise like five times, 10 times. Then I turn and give the guests and they do a couple of them. 
The idea is to help the dog feel comfortable interacting with new people and have it looking, uh, getting direct eye contact for them. Um, and we want to build one good experience on top of another. The idea is we really don't want the reactivity. Every time he reacts, we're kind of going to lose some of our progress. So it's better to have short, successful visits than have a longer visit that ends in a negative. And also, if it ends in a negative, that's the freshest memory engram the dog will have next time they have that encounter. So always end on a good one, whether it's training, dog psychology, dog behavior modification, bat training, whatever it is, always want to end on a good one so the dog thinks it was a good thing that happened. All right, so um, I'm going to now just kind of summarize what we went over in the session. We talked about exercise. Uh, we don't have a, uh, stairs here, um, so we talked about just calling, doing a recall. My back a little bit. Um, and so basically, um, maybe one person's on one side of the house, one person's on the other side of the house, the other two dogs are away, and then we just call Zeus. So Zeus comes to us, we give him the treat and say, come. And the other person says, Zeus, come. He runs the other side of the house. He's a St. Bernard. He doesn't have a ton of uh, endurance, um, and so it might only take maybe 5 or 10 or 15 fetch uh, uh, recalls. And he's like, Phew. remember, if you see him licking himself, he needs exercise. He's boisterous. Exercise. Barking. He needs exercise. Or at least ask yourself how long it's been since he's had exercise. Remember, dog exercise is best done every two to four hours. And so, and especially right after getting let out of the kennel, we definitely need to give him some exercise then too. Um, so uh, if you do have stairs, the doggy stair master, I have a video for that. So message me if you want to do that. Uh, right now, we don't know if you're going to have stairs or not. But if you can do the stairs, that's a great one. Um, the fetch or the recall, uh, the recall that I talked about was just great. Uh, remember, the first time you do it, do it with an empty stomach. Keep doing it until the dog's like, you're crazy. I've been down, up and down those stairs 19 times or whatever the number is so we know the maximum number. We want to exercise about 50 to 75% of that maximum number multiple times a day about every two to four hours. So um, we also talked about set games, leaving the treats around the house. We used, talked about playing fetch. Uh, and again, each one of these things we should, uh, not for set games, or fetch, for the treat, stair, uh, treat tosses up and down the stairs, doggy stair master I call it, or the recall, we want to do the first time as, with an empty stomach until the dog says I'm done doing that so we know what that maximum number is. Um, the other thing you do is hide treats around the house and say hunt, search, booty, whatever it is when they find them. That's a nice way to, uh, to get them to use their nose. Um, and then, uh, let me see, uh, also feeding out of a snuffle mat. If you or go to uh, Amazon and search your snuffle mat, the gray one that I showed you on that video will be the first one that comes up. That's about $35. It's a great way to, if you feed them on the snuffle mat, that's like sneaking a walk-in. And that would definitely be great for your Akita, who is kind of, we need more, more low-impact aerobic uh, activities. Um, and then same thing with the Omega Paw Treat Ball, that orange thing that I showed you. That's a great one. Now, be careful if you have two, multiple dogs together, that could be a resource for them to guard. That's a nice thing for uh, the dog to do uh, when you have guests over or something along those lines. Just be careful, you know, obviously that you feel comfortable and confident. Um, all right, so, uh, uh, and also last thing we talked about was the walking. He, Zeus does not sniff very much in the walks, which is wrong. A dog should always be sniffing. A lot of times we, we call them away. We don't want them to sniff. We want them to get back home or we want them walking because we think that's the exercise. Dogs burn more energy by sniffing on a walk than they do from actually walking. And sniffing is also calming, relaxing, and confidence building. So what I'd have you do is to get him used to sniffing is rig it. So before you go for a walk, get some shredded cheese, walk on the inside of the driveway, put a little bit of it on the, on the, in the grass there. On the next driveway, put a little bit of grass on this side. So after you're going up on a walk, and you kind of lead the dog towards where it is. And then the dog licks it up, and uh, so after a while, the dog's looking for more of that cheese. So now when the dog's on a walk, it's sniffing the ground, and it's not paying attention looking for the boogeyman. It's sniffing and getting positive reinforcement by sniffing the ground. And eventually that will lead to sniffing and finding uh, rabbit scat and uh, you know all sorts of droppings and stuff that they find we find disgusting, they find interesting. Um, so don't ever uh, pull your, try to call your dog away when it's sniffing. Let it sniff. You're going to always lose to the nose. And your dog practices then listening, ignoring you. So make sure you wait for the dog to get done and have the treat and give it a treat. Reward it for doing what you want. And like I talked about in the video above at the very end, make sure every time your dog looks at you, you're saying eyes or whatever the word is. And you can have your finger on the clicker. Walking, and as soon as the dog looks up at you, click eyes. And then walk a little bit more. Wait for them to look at click eyes. So you're waiting for the dog to do it for the eyes exercise. Uh, for the rest of the stuff, make sure you prime the clicker a couple more times, throwing the 10 treats on the ground, clicking every time the dog licks it up. And then you're going to use the clicker for treat, teaching the dog new uh, tricks and games. I would go to YouTube and search for easy clicker training tricks. There'll be a whole bunch that come up and they show you how to use a clicker. Uh, the more skills that you can teach Zeus, and I would teach all the dogs these same commands, but the more skills that he has, the more confidence he's going to have, the less he's reactive he'll be. Most dogs are reactive or insecure. Building uh, confidence through learning lessons is a great way to insulate from that. Okay, we also talked about rules. Uh, well, we talked about dog psychology. Remember, good attention, bad attention, same thing. 
Anything your dog is doing when you pet it is what you're reinforcing. So if you pet a barking dog and you pet it within th two seconds of it barking, you're rewarding it for barking, jumping up, uh, chewing things, whatever it is. Um, also, for dogs, good attention, uh, well, good attention and bad attention, the same thing, but anything that your dog does in your presence that you don't disagree with, you're saying, I'm a cool with that. Dogs learn by probing, waiting for you to say no, then they circle around and try again, and they do that enough times, if you do it a number of times in a row consistently, the dog learns, that's against the rule. But if it does it 10 times, the 11th time, you're not paying attention and it gets able to cross the line, then it, you lose a lot of progress. So you really want to be very strict about these things for at least three months or as long as the problems are still going on. So um, let me see. Uh, the rules we talked about, having this, uh, not being allowed on the furniture. Order the X mats and just put them up on the furniture. That'll just do the job for you. At the same time, get a dog bed. Put a dog bed in front of the TV, condition the dog to the dog bed the way I showed you. If you have any questions about that, message me. I have a video for that I can share with you. I have videos for all this stuff. So anything that you have questions on that I'm talking about now, if you don't remember, text me or well, you're going to be overseas, so email me and I'll send you a link to it. Um, okay, so uh, we also talked about a premac. Premac is a principle. Premac means that a less desirable behavior will earn me a more desirable behavior. So you go to the door and tell the dog to sit one time. If it doesn't sit within two seconds, walk away and sit down. Don't chastise it, don't correct it, don't ask multiple times, just it doesn't get what it wants. You sit down, you wait for one minute. After one minute, you go back to the door, tell the dog to sit. If it sits, as soon as it sits, you fly the door open. If it doesn't sit this time, I walk away and sit down for two minutes. Next time I sit down for four minutes, eight minutes, and so on. But eventually when I say sit, the dog's butt hits the ground, then I open the door and it's able to go outside. I would do the pre-mac principle for feeding, even preparing the food. Tell the dog to sit. When it sits, if this is the dish, let's say the dog's sitting there, I say sit. As soon as it sits, I reach for the container, the dog gets up, I pull my hand back and I say sit. If it sits, then I would continue the process. If it doesn't sit, I would maybe go sit back down and wait till the dog completely loses interest and then try again. So let's say I say sit and it sits. I reach for it, it gets up, I stop, I say sit. It sits, I reach again, second time, it gets up, sit. Third time, sit. Fourth time, I reach and the dog gets up. I just pull my arm back and I look at the dog. I don't say sit. The dog should, at this point, know what you want. If it sits within two seconds, then I reach again. If it doesn't sit, I go sit back down. Practice these things at times when you don't actually need to do them. Practice the, the feeding principle without actually feeding them outside of meal time. Practice leashing your dog up when you're not going to take it for a walk. So the more that you practice these things out of concert, you take away your personal baggage of your timetable. If we got to get there quickly before I go to, so I'm not late to work. No, I have five minutes while my some partner's taking the bathroom break. I'm going to practice leashing the dog up. Um, I have exercises on keeping the dogs to stay calm in the leash. Um, I also have uh, videos. Another thing that you should graduate to is teaching the dog that just because the door is open doesn't mean I have permission to wait to go out. I have to wait for permission to exit the open door with nothing blocking me other than my respect for my human's authority. Um, so uh, look for those opportunities to do that pre-mac. Sitting, um, other rules, uh, sitting before you prepare food, making them wait until you give them permission. Now, eating is not really a pre-mac because there's a reinforcer, but it's a similar concept. So put all the food down and then make sure that none of the dogs go in the room. The human eats something first, then we invite the first dog in. What's the Akita's name? Emmy. Emmy. So Emmy comes in and when Emmy's eating, Zeus and the other dog are not allowed to be in there. So Emmy sees the human has my back and Zeus sees the humans are not letting me go sweat Emmy. And they're gonna, because Emmy and Zeus eat at the same time, so they're probably gonna challenge for it a little bit. Don't do that. Or, or, or that's okay, but just stick to your guns. And eventually they'll all wait outside. And remember, each time they take a bite of food, say uh, meatball, lasagna, uh, sushi, whatever it is, so each dog has its own unique command for it. Um, let me see, other rules not be allowed in the kitchen. Use the exercise I showed you and use the bacon analogy. And you can always search for kitchen or invisible on my website, and there's videos that'll show you how to do that. Um, also, not being allowed within seven feet of a human who's eating. That's an inappropriate, it's just a way of challenging. We also talked about petting with a purpose and passive training. And, but also before that, look at other op opportunities for rules. The more rules you can incorporate, the smaller the dog's world is, the more it sees you as a leader, the more confident they are in your leadership, the less insecure they'll be about other things that happen. All right, um, so we also talked about petting with a purpose. Petting with a purpose. If I'm a dog and I nudge you, I'm telling you what to do. Leaders tell, followers ask. So the next time a dog nudges you, say, show the dog, I don't take your orders, give it a counter order, tell it to sit. If it's already sitting here, tell it to sit here or here or tell it to lay down for the Akita who can't uh, really sit very well. If they sit within three seconds, put them under the chin and say sit. Not good sit, just sit. Hmm. If, they don't, if they don't sit within three seconds, show them. I have 12 other things I could be doing. I made you number one, but if you don't want to sit, that's fine. I'm not going to ask multiple times. I'm not going to beg. But you miss out. I'm now playing a board game with my wife. I'm reading my emails. I'm watching TV. And I'm living my best life, and you're the one who missed out. That will motivate the dog to want to listen to you the next time. 
event with enough practice, the dog will recognize, if I want some attention from the humans, I have to sit in order to, to get attention from them. And the dog's gonna recognize that I, I can't just tell them anymore, I have to ask, and better than ask, I'm gonna prepay for that attention by sitting in front of them to prepay and say, please, will you pet me? When they do, make sure you do pet them and recognize, reward them. Now you can pet the dog anywhere you want, except for don't pat them on the head. But if all things are equal, pet them under the chin, get that nose up like we talked about. Um, use the watchword a paycheck. If you suspect someone's petting without a purpose, you come in the room and you say paycheck. That person, even if they did it right, stops petting, tells the dog to sit. If they sit, pet on the chin, say actually I asked them to sit. When you flush the toilet, they got up. But thank you, because I do forget to pet without a purpose. So it's if you want to pet the dog or the dog is demanding attention, you tell it to sit first. Uh, that'll increase the dog's respect for you as an authority figure. It'll boost its confidence. It'll also have a practice basic obedience. And it will lastly uh, make your pets more valuable because I can't get them for no reason. I have to earn them. We also talked about passive training, or which is a form of outbrain conditioning, which means that you wait for the dog to organically offer you the behavior without any influence. Every time a dog comes to you, pet it and say, come. Every time it sits next to you, pet it and say, sit. When it lays down, uh, when it eats food, call it meatball or whatever it is. When it poops, you say business or whatever the word is. After a while, the dog starts to associate those two things together. This is truly the easiest way to train a dog. It just takes observation for you. What we're doing is just celebrating the things the dog does that we like, and that's the word that I typically use as my watchword. So if I'm sitting here watching TV and Zeus walks up to me and I missed it, my partner says, uh, celebrate. I just turn and I start putting the dog as soon as I, as fast as I can. Then I look at the position the dog is in and I say whatever the command word for that action is. If he's standing, I'm a pet him and say, assume it's a cum. If he's sitting or laying down, it's pretty obvious. So um, and you name all your individual toys. If your dog does anything unusual, pet it and say that thing as well. My dog Quest grumbles. And every time he grumbled, I petted him and said the word grumble. Now he comes up and goes, I grumble, 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 when he wants pets. And it's funny, but how would you teach a dog that? You wait and um, sign the marker when the dog's in the action of doing it. And again, try to avoid saying good dog or good sit or whatever, just say just the command word. Look at that. Hi. Uh, I'm doing a roadmap to success video. Uh, one of our trainers, Kayla, is watching her, walking her dog, Archie. Uh, what a trip. Um, give us a minute if you can, let me finish this up. All right, so basically uh, use those watchwords and pr uh, passive train and uh, reward your dog uh, with a petting with a purpose that will make a big difference. Um, also went over the escalating consequences. Message me if you forget what those are. Um, but remember, those are things not to be done for aggression. If the dog is acting out or acting aggressive, never disagree or punish it. Increase the distance. That's the dog's way of communicating, I don't like something. So we don't, if we punish or disregard it, then the dog's going to continue doing those things. All right, well, now if you have any other questions, make sure you let me know. Even when you're overseas, if I don't hear from you, I assume that means everything's going great. So please text me or call me if you have any questions or problems, and I'm happy to help you. Um, I normally say this is Zeus, but Zeus is inside, and, but this is Zeus's roadmap to success. Remember, everything you do trains your dog, only sometimes you mean it.